Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who host Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at smashitderby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at stirringdirtracing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FingerLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now your host, Chris Marquardt. Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, episode 285 on deck tonight. Excited to have all you folks joining us here this evening. This is going to be a good one. No question, Josh Decker is going to be joining us a little bit later on to talk about that action. We've got some updates on some of the Midwest Derby action with Zach Anderson coming away with a win, kind of, and uh, Kenny Rosno taking a win. Steve Siopa picked up a win at the Keystone Nationals down in Pennsylvania, so we'll be hitting on a little bit of that stuff as well. But before we get into all that, we have uh, a couple special guests making a return to the show. And it's been a little while, but making a return to the show nonetheless. Chuck Bowman, the Hillbilly Hammer, back on the show, fresh off a run at the Otsuka County Fairgrounds in Morris, New York. And then also waiting in the wings on the line, one um, uh, Mark Crossy joining us here. I'm excited to have both of you guys on, um, making the trip in from, uh, what is it now, Fayette, right? Yep, Fayette. Fayette versus... Mark's drive in from England. That's yeah, right. It's a long <laughs> but drive. But you guys got to guys got to run together a little bit this weekend. It, uh, how much fun was it? Oh, it was a great time. Just seeing, you know, it was. I just rented a car down there, thanks to Josh Decker, and I just ran hard just to have fun. And Mark seemed to enjoy himself and made the feature, so that was nice. Did you have a good time, Mark? That was excellent, Chris. Uh, Charles helped me out, and uh, we we helped each other. And in the first heat, we Charles was Charles was great. He's done a great job. Uh, we, we I managed to get in the feature, and once I got in the feature, I got the hang of things and uh, managed to get a fourth. So I was really really happy with that. Tell me how things compared from what you're used to banger racing at home in England and and running a demolition derby here. Um, in England, we do three heats. Um, three races of 15 laps and the first of the first three drivers get prize money for that so you do 15 laps basically anything go anything goes you have to all go around the same way on the track you can't go the opposite way only in a 25 meter zone where you can wait on the bend for somebody if you want to stop somebody from winning the race and then you can pull out and hit them head on um, when they're coming out of the bend but uh, you can't hit the driver's door the same as what you've got here. Then at the end, if your car is still running, then you can take it out in the demolition derby after that. So, um, yeah, that's that's a little bit different to what you do. And I had a, I had a couple of heat wins um, back in March and then went out and won the demolition derby afterwards. And that's something special when you can do that. But it's um, certainly different to here. But very interesting and very hard over there but it was the racing was hard here too and yeah very very good we had uh andrew ship on the show back when he made the trip to winter slam a couple years back and and he said he said similar things um in terms of some of the comparisons and and things along those lines uh you ran pretty much the the ideal um build in terms of demolition derby in this part of the country um, it wasn't anything too extravagant. It was a nice, nice, simple build. If I remember right, you had a 77 Buick, and uh, and things things went pretty well for you as a whole, coming away with fourth place. They went really well. Jeremy Gully built me a very good car, um, not overbuilt, not underbuilt, just right for for what I needed to do, and managed to. In the feature, I man- managed to snap it really well with some good hard head-ons, and uh, yeah, so I was really pleased with how I done, really, to be honest, just for my second run. Right. Um, we have the heat. Um, if if we want to, uh, if if you guys want to, we can play through the heat, and and you guys can talk us through. Chuck at least can talk us through a little bit of what we're looking at. Um, you tagged me the the video and it's got audio with it. Do you want to watch part of the heat? Yeah, I can. Yeah. yeah. 
So Chuck, you're in the. Weeds. I was I was in the weights, just kind of waiting to see what Mark was going to do, just to see how uh, things are going to play out for him. Well, we gotta we gotta set the stage here. Five Eleven is you in the white board, right? Yeah, yep. And that's a car that came from Josh Decker. I rented down there for the day, just to uh, go down and play with Mark. And then Mark is in the <laughs> five ninety five. Yep, yep. So I'm just kind of hanging out, playing around, and. A few, of the, a few of the guys were giving them some nice shots just to let them know they were there. Nothing too malicious, but they were letting them know they all wanted a shot at them. Charles, I've been watching the video a couple of times, and like Charles said, um, I, I, as I came out, I remember I came out and hit something straight away, but then I got pushed into one corner and got three three shots of guys, but then got managed to get out and get myself through then Charles came went end to end and got a couple of guys quite hard so that was uh, pretty good. <laughs> well, notice that El Camino opened up today. I think that was Michael Ladd, black number nine. Yeah. He's been known to see damage down there. This scan is if you see Carney Fairgrounds and Morris we're watching the blue car in the middle there is Mark also trying to qualify for the feature at Morris and this is the, the cane maker that Chuck Bowman threw. <laughs> Almost flipped the car and we have a 511 and uh, this is uh, this, this buddy teamwork is leading to some additional things to come as I understand. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, well, this is, this is uh, leading to me going over there to England and trying my hand at the banger races. Yeah, really, I can't wait to go over and see Mark over there, and uh, he's going to put me in an old school chain and bang class, none of the extreme classes over there, and I like it. This red flag was for when you caught that El Camino with the wheel on the back? Yeah, yeah. Now, no, see, I don't always go for a trophy in the wind, but the best part was seeing Josh run, trying to run up and down the side of the track just to watch my hits. You know, you hear his voice start to go up and see him try to run down the track to see the hits. That's a, a measure of achievement there. <laughs> so back to Green here, this is a qualifying heat to suck in and mark. And here, I want to give it to the low life car there. I'm not sure his name, but boy, he gave it to me good right there. I felt that one the next day for sure. <laughs> good hit, though. It was, I cheered him on as I was getting hit. It was perfect. How many times a year do you run over there in England, Mark? How many times a year do you run over there? How many times a year? How many? <laughs> that's pretty wild. It's so funny to hear you call it Charles. You was <laughs> <laughs> and he says it so proper. <laughs> 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 the end of that. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck's done a great job. <laughs> Cover our heat right there. That'll, that'll wrap that up. Now I do have some of the features. My battery died before the end. I'll have to tag in that at the end so you can watch Mark's heat. For the feature. Well, it was uh, it was it was an entertaining run to to say the least. Um, you know, to come away with with fourth place, like you said, Chuck. You know, you don't typically go for the you don't typically go for the trophies. No, no, I but just. It's it's now tailored just to your style getting the chance to go over there and do some banger racing. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like what we used to do in the field. You know, it wasn't out to just totally destroy people, but you wanted to bump them as you were passing them. Sometimes right. you take them out. <laughs> 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 Um, you ever even remotely think that you would be talking about going to England to run in a bag of race? No, no, and this is something <laughs> that, and this is something that goes back to Jeremy Gully. That you know, I just taped a relic class. That's all I did. You know, he put on that 
that show down there in San Filippo. I just taped it and put it online. And that's what this led to. Mark and them, it got shared over there. They got interested. And so it all stems from that. So it's, it, it raised awareness all around the world. <laughs> just uh, smashing old cars really got some attention. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, I think it got to 125,000 views fast. I mean, I don't know what it's up to now. That that's was awesome. last year. So Jeremy's done a great job there bringing it bringing awareness. <laughs> Say that again? That was, that was great. We had, um, Jody just said that it was over 500,000 views on San Filippo, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's the chance to now do that, to go over to England, all stems from that. And, you know, I'm excited about it, and I just got to get the wife talked into going. She said I could go, but I got to talk her into going. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what else have you had the chance to do other than other than work on junk and wreck cars over here? <laughs> well, uh, Jody, uh, Jeremy Gully's wife has kindly took me to New York today. We've had a lovely day there, doing some sightseeing, and um, we now we now just picked up a milkshake on the way back, and then it's back to the grindstone tomorrow because we've got to get a car ready for a Lincoln Town car ready for bone stock on Sunday at Norwich. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting my hands dirty again and getting a car ready. Now, in terms of bone stock, is the, is the 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 language the same, you know, your ultimate stock class over in England, is it called bone stock there? Because you picked up the lexicon here pretty fast. Um, we have we have what they call back to basics. Um, okay. Under the, the, we have the national bangers, which are they're 1800cc engines and higher, so they're mainly between a two litre and, a, and a any size engine. <laughs> And then we have the under 1800 bangers, and then we have what they call back to basics. So you have up to 1800 back to basics, which are like bone stock smaller cars, and then we have over 1800 back to basics, which is unlimited. So we're going to try and get um, get Charles out in the in the back to basics unlimited, so there'll be the bigger back to basics cars. So he'll do three races and then a demolition derby at the end. Nice. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be a good time. <laughs> yeah. That's only real. And I, I think, to be honest with you, I think Charles will do well at that. Um, you know, you can see he knows how to drive a car, and he definitely knows how to how to to put on a show. Well, yes, I mean, that's that's sort of his thing. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a bit of his calling card at at home here at the Seneca, <laughs> at, at the Seneca County Fair. I, I think he's got a handful of trophies. None of them are for first, second, and third. It's always heavy hitters <laughs> and mad dogs and stuff yeah. like that. That's it. Yeah, he's he's definitely uh, you know he definitely helped me no end in that heat. And I, I honestly think that if Charles hadn't helped me out in that heat, I wouldn't have qualified for the feature. That's no doubt in my mind about that. Did well, you, you just remember when I'm over in England that you can help me out? <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll be racing with you that day. And, um, you know, if anyone if anyone uh, takes you out, then I'll be right right there to take them out. But. All, right. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Are you shipping a car over there? No, he's going to build me one over there graciously. You know, he, Jeremy built him one. He offered to build me a car over there. and So it's going to be me and one of them. Little foreign cars. Put the seat all the way back. Take the front seat out. Let him sit in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. We'll build you a good car. We'll get you something that you can have a a good run with. Something good and reliable and strong that will be fast. The no. nice part is that if you do sit in the back seat, you can just put your hand out the back window and hold the trunk down. That's so right. you in the back, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> No. What's, the, what's the car choice for the Back to Basics? Um, well, to be honest, it can be anything over 1800cc up until any size. So it'll probably be something like a, a six-cylinder BMW or a Mercedes or a Jaguar. Um, or it could be a Volvo. But it'll be something, it'll be something six-cylinder, so it'll be something fairly, fairly fast. Um, 
Our tracks there range from, um, you have a, a smaller track and a larger track. I'd probably like to get Charles on a on a on a medium sized track because then he can he's got something. Because obviously if he hasn't raced around on a circular track for a while, then he's going to need something that he's going to not something too fast to, to to go on to. But then, so he'll, the track he'll be on will be about. Um, it's difficult to, to, to give you an exact size, but it'll be, it'll be a track that he can get up to probably around about 50, 60 mile an hour, I'd say, in oh, second no. gear. <laughs> Two questions for you, <laughs> <laughs> One, if, if you get a BMW, a Mercedes, or a Jaguar, you're going to wreck the nicest car you've ever been in. That's right. Do you that's agree? Yep, that's okay. Right. Agree, yeah. All right. And how, what are the odds that you don't come back from England? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be rough. <laughs> if I can get to 60, it's going to be rough. <laughs> that's that's going to be wild. Here we, here, we, here we find, Chris, because over there, in the Back to Basics class, the rules are different where you can't go... In Back to Basics, you're only allowed to spin to the inside of the track. You're not really allowed to spin to the fence, and you're allowed to just push on the bends, but you're not allowed to hit... You're not allowed to hit cars that are stationary, so it's a little bit more old school in the rules in the fact that you race around and spin cars out of the way to try and win the race. So it's not going to be nothing too heavy on the hitting side of things. And then in the demolition derby, even I mean the demolition derbies are, are, hit, are harder hits, but it's a small it's a small part of the track that they run it on, but it's on tarmac, so you know. Charles will be okay there. He's, there's no way he'll be getting injured or anything like that. You know, it's, it's, it's something that he'll be just coming over there, having, having some fun, a bit like what I'm doing over here, and we'll go and have some beer and, uh, and talk about it afterwards. The, at one point, things, things got pretty crazy. You know, some of those uh, banger videos that you watch, are, it's the, the impacts are spectacular and the cars are bent right over over on top of themselves and things like that. Is that is that a rare occurrence or is that pretty common now? No, that's common. At every unlimited meeting, at every unlimited national banger meeting, most meetings they have, like, you have about 10 qualifying meetings to try and qualify for the world final every year. And they have what they call a wild card race where... Um, you go out and try and qualify, and then the next race, they have a race where um, it's a more of a, a, a destruction race. So if you if you sit on the bend and take someone out, you get a lot of points towards qualifying. So maybe you might do two or three laps and get a puncher, and if you do two or three laps and get a puncher, rather than deciding to pull off, you can just wait on the bend till somebody comes around the bend and just take them out and you get points for that. So it makes it exciting from the spectator's point of view. Sure. It just, it, it, it always looked like, I, like every time you watch those banger racing videos, it's like somebody died in that accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that it's just looking. so crazy. <laughs> I can't wait to do it. Fucking Jeremy. No, no, it's not, it's not like that, you know. Yeah, I'm guessing people, people don't often get injured, that's a fact. It's, the cars have built really, really well. Yeah. People don't, until you actually come over and look at the cars, you can't comprehend how well they're built. Well, you're right. Um, I've never, I've never been to England to see them up close, so that's a, that's a fair thing. I, I think there's still a very good chance that um, Chuck doesn't come back because the ability <laughs> to hit at 60 miles an hour, he doesn't get the tracks around here are too wet. He can't get that fast. That's right. <laughs> Now, now, I got a little, you know, I know Josh has been giving you advice on how to drive that town car, you know, use the back bumper a little, use the back end a few times, and then use the nose, but like I put on my post, I think you just save the back for other people to hit, and you just send that thing nose first and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, you, you bet, Charles, I'll definitely be doing that, all right? <laughs> You've already finished fourth, you don't need another win, you just need to have a good time this time. <laughs> You finished it, fourth in exactly, the Charles. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, can't, I can't wait. <laughs> and you're running, uh, you're going to be running this weekend too, right? Getting ready for Norwich? Yeah, I'm, ru I'm running at Norwich on Sunday. Um, and then... I did, speak to I did speak to Josh Decker a couple of days ago, and he said he might be able to get me a car for... Uh, for Holmesdale, but you know, I don't have. 
if that materialises, that'll be great. If it doesn't, then I, you know it's no problem because um, I've had a great time already. But um, I, I might, you know, there's no pressure on Josh to get me a car. But if I did turn up at Homestow to watch, and then suddenly said, "Oh, we've got you a car," then I'd be pretty, I'd be really <laughs> excited to do it. But <laughs> as like I say, there's no. It's Josh has done a, enough for me and Jeremy's done enough for me as it is, so I'll, I'll just be happy to do one more run at, at um, Norwich. We've, we've got to get the car ready and Jeremy's got a really, really busy life as it is and I'm just grateful for for what he's done already and I've, I've given him some money for, for San Filippo for, for, or for Martin. Basically, I've given him some money for Martin to say this is for Martin, for him building me the car. And when I get back to England, I'm going to be doing some fundraising and some car shows over there to carry on uh, and some money for San Filippo. That's cool. I like it. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a picture of Chuck with, with his car. Uh, Josh, we're going to be catching up with Josh here in, in, in just a few minutes, talking with him a little bit more about um, the front to back of, of Morris and Otsego County and all the action that was happening out there. It, was a, it sounds like it was a dynamite show. Did you catch oh, yeah. any of the Imperials? Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. I had to watch that. That's, yeah, that's, that was a good reason for going right there. That was a good show. You know, I've, always, I've never driven an imp, and I probably never should. <laughs> just, just for the fact that <laughs> but I love those jokes. Loved, I mean, a lot of the people I didn't know their names, but like Anthony Wall had some really nice looking imps there. Right. And then that, uh, was it a 2010 Lincoln or a, be. might have been newer or something. I ended up getting like third place. I mean, it was, it was quite a nice show. You know, he, his car was, it didn't want to give up. You know, he, right. it was nice. Um, do you get a lot of V8 stuff, or at least the, the recognizable stuff from the United States in any of the banger racing stuff, either years past or, or at present? Oh yeah, we um, really? we get a lot of V8s um, in England. Um, now, in times gone by, I buy and sell a lot of classic cars and classic car parts, so I specialise in what's called the Rover P5B. And the B stands for Buick because they were a Buick V8 engine. And I have a couple of, uh, I have one over there, which is a normal classic car, which is too good for racing, but... The Rover P5B was very popular for racing in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They're more of a classic now, and there are some get raced because some of them are, I mean, some of them, I had one particular guy, I've got to show Jeremy the photo, who I sold him one that was absolutely rotten to the core, and he welded it up, and took, he took about three, three to four weeks to weld it up and made it stronger again, and he'd done two meetings with it, so... You do get the occasional V8, V8 out there now, yeah. And we've raced with a lot, a lot of American cars. I've raced a couple myself, and we've raced with a lot of American cars in England. And there's now and again we get a sprinkling of them coming out for the big meets. I suppose every year we have about eight to ten big meets where people bring some old school cars out, some American cars out, and they're really, really good meetings. Now Imperials and. The older Chryslers are also banned at most of their banger races, just like here at our demolition derbies right. over there. The same thing, I, you know. I didn't. I started reading into some of the rules and everything over there, and just to see that the Chrysler and Imperial were <laughs> banned also over there. It was a good feeling, right? You know, I get hit by one of those doing sixty right. <laughs> in, your, in your BMW. <laughs> good night. <laughs> Better have Ben welded the cage in. That's uh. And it's cool. I mean, did, what else? You said you made some other trips to the states prior. How's this one compare? This is totally different, to be fair. Um, I've been to I've been to Florida, Las Vegas, and um, Boston. I when I went to Florida, I went round um, Daytona on a track day. Just you know, not racing against anybody else, but I, I've done that. But this is, this is, I can honestly say this has been the best holiday, and I've traveled all around the world. This has been the best holiday I've ever had. I've been here a week and a day now, <laughs> and I've fell in love with this place, and I've fell in love with the people. It's been incredible. Um, most of the time, Jerry and me and I have been doing the, doing the car, but I have had time out where I've been and done a bit of sightseeing. I've met some incredible people, and like I say, I've got a good life back in England, but I just really don't want to go home yet. <laughs> right. Did, 
Did you meet Dan Bolton? Uh, Dan Bolton. Did I meet Dan Bolton? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think no. he did. No? I haven't, not yet. I haven't, not yet. No, the name doesn't ring a bell. If you do, he'll probably sell you his truck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm staying for a bit longer then. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I want to rent. I want to rent Dan Bolton's truck. Yeah. <laughs> you won't hurt it. That's like one of the five cars that have been built on this earth that you can't bend. Can you imagine me sitting in that thing. No, I can't. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'd scare myself. <laughs> you, <laughs> I, I don't think you'd run out of guts though. It'd no, be fun. No, I wouldn't let out. It would be fun. Get, yeah. The wife was telling me it over this run. She's like, you got to learn a little self-control. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it was a stock car. It only had a bar behind the seat. That right. was it. And you've done better than most of You've done cars. worse with worse. Oh, yeah. A Christmas experience in a truck. Um, so I'm you sure if anyone can bend it, Charles Bowman can. <laughs> <laughs> You're going over there next year? Yeah, next summer. I'm, Sometime I'm between May and September. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping... Uh, End of July after the Seneca County Fair, beginning of August time time of year. I don't know if England's ready for you. I don't know. I don't it'll know. be fun. It'll be it, an adventure. It'll be entertaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the hillbilly hammer shows up in a bag of trash. No taverns. <laughs> huh? <laughs> no taverns. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. One pub. That's it. That's it? That's it. Really? <laughs> is that is that advice or a rule? <laughs> it's advice. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I want to know more about that. <laughs> Find out what the deal is on that one. I, Mark, man, I gotta get I gotta get Josh on here in a few minutes. Is there anything else that we didn't hit on, or anything else that you'd like to mention? Um, really, I'd just like to make, just give a special mention to Jeremy Gully and J Jody Gully. They are. I've got to be honest with you now, and I don't say this lightly, they've got the best family I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. They sure do. They will open yeah, their doors to... So I, I, can't, I can't speak highly enough about those two people. I love them like I do my own family. Mm -hmm. You're uh, you're not alone. I don't. I've never met anybody that that doesn't speak with the utmost respect and high regard for for those guys. They are uh, absolutely great people. They have a great family. They'll open their house to anybody. Um, any part that you need at a derby track, they've got it for you. And it's been a, a big asset to the derby community uh, for them to continue to expand their schedule with spinning wheels the way that they have. Uh, they are grade A, top notch people, and and you couldn't have picked a better group to to stick around with. They're they they're absolutely the best. Yeah, you're right. And uh, you know everybody involved with spinning wheels has been so. They're obviously the those those two people are the are the top at spinning. You know, I know I know uh, that Josh is is involved with it as well. But um, Josh, Charles, and Jeremy, and Jeremy's family, and all the guys at Spinning Wheels, I can't speak highly enough about any of them. They're just awesome people. They, uh, they are. Be better for not forget Josh Buell. He did go get your flag. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah Josh, Josh Buell. Josh Buell, if you listen, I owe you a big jug of lager, okay? <laughs> You're speaking his language. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's all he needed to hear. It's thanks enough. How do you feel about Keystone in England? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Josh drinks Keystone. Oh, Keystone. Okay, we'll see if we can find some of that. <laughs> look on the uh, look. Go to the bottom shelf and look the next shelf lower, and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right enjoy your milkshakes I'm glad you got a chance to see a little bit of the uh the touristy destinations but i'm also glad that you found some of the countryside a little bit just like home it's uh i, I look forward to hearing more about how you make out in norwich and hopefully things go well in honesdale and, and by all means keep in touch with us with how things are going over there in england with the banger racing if there's anybody else that we should get on the show we'd be happy to talk to them and and just just make sure that make sure that that Chuck comes back because he's got derbies to drive here. Not so much being hurt, but he's going to fall in love with that action over there. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll look after him over there. Don't worry, he'll be coming back in one piece. And uh, it's been great talking to you guys, and we'll definitely be keeping in touch regularly. For sure, man. We appreciate it a ton. Take care and God bless America. See you later. Thank you. Later, <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Charles. Take care, buddy. You too. See you soon. Yep. There goes Mark Cossey. Had a ball over there. 
And uh, at the Otsego County Fairgrounds, going to fourth overall in the feature in the stock class in a Jeremy Gully prepared 1977 Buick. Was it an Electra? Um, was it, remember those cars that Kirk Jones drove a bunch yeah, of times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it was the Bon, not the Bonneville, that's what I had. Uh, hmm. Le Mans, I think it was a Pontiac. Was it a Pontiac? Le Mans? I don't know. He said it was a <laughs> I think it was a. Yeah. I think that's what he told me. I don't know. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> it happens. Josh is on the phone. Josh, how are you? I'm doing good, Chris. Mm. How are you guys doing? I'm okay. You sound sick. No, I'm. Well, I did four days. I did four days announcing, and the last day I did a double header, and it's hurting me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Would you get a lot done at work today? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> comment. But I, I gotta say, I was just listening to the beginning of that, and isn't Mark like the best person that ever could have come from England? Like the guy is money, isn't Mark, he? Mark and Andy both were good people. I mean, it's it's been we've gotten very lucky to have people that were quite humbled and, and, and appreciative of it, you know, you know, it could have gone, could have gone a much different way. And, and they've, they've touched down with the right people, you know, with Andy ship staying with Randy, uh, up there at yep. winter slam. And, and now with yep. Mark landed with the gullies over here, it worked out, worked out pretty well. Yeah. And I got to give it to gully because, um, you know, he built Mark two cars. Right. And gully's got so much going on, but the day before, uh, we were on, We started derbies on Thursday night at Morris, so we had a, in our heads all our derby cars had to be done before then, you know, that we were working on. And on Tuesday night, the tranny went bad right. at about 11 o'clock at night, and those guys went and pulled the tranny in the middle of the night, put it in. I think Gully went to bed at 4 a.m. to make sure that Mark's car moved and worked before our Hell Week started. We right. call this Hell Week because we have so many derbies. <laughs> That's how Gully kicked off Hell Week. <laughs> so how, how was it? I mean, run me through, run me through what you got. You, uh, you oh spent a lot God. of time with the mic it's in your hand. A, such a fantastic week. Uh, we right? started up on Thursday, Morris. We did bone stock night, and I love bone stock stuff, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know. And uh, we got down to V8 bone stocks. Rally A won it in uh, Shocker. Okay. Um, I came down to him in a Vic. It was good. Um, and then we did. We had a team mini trucks four man team mini truck and it was a one and done everybody in there at once mm -hmm. and actually the gate guys from jyd adrian gilbert groff um hirsch and dick up were the winners right the new york version of jyd yes yeah <laughs> and um they ran bone stock mini vans and i'm telling you i looked at them i mean these guys like they didn't even nine wire a bunch of the doors or the back it was and they ended up winning it which was cool um, and minivans, all four at minivans. Right. Um, and then we went over on Friday night, we went to Honesdale. Mm -hmm. And um, same kind of stuff, but we had youth division. 30 kids, 30 kids showed up wow. for the 12 to 15 year old division. That's a lot. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I ran with Trent, I took Oldsmobile over there with Trent, and Trent and I were the first ones to pull in. Mm -hmm. And I said, Trent, you know, shut it off. A lot of cars got to come in. And, about three quarters through, Trent looks at me. He's like, "Dad, oh my gosh, when are the cars going to stop? This is too many cars." I'm like, "I told you, Trent, this is, is going to be crazy." And I'll tell you, the green flag dropped, and we got our butt kicked. I mean, the hits, kids were hitting so hard. Uh, it's it's crazy to me that twelve to fifteen year olds are good drivers. Um, but it came down to a young year, a young lady that was fifteen, and she out drove everybody she was junking boys i mean like one after another and it was unbelievable to watch the crowd was screaming from her for her. it was a really good night we had a really good night down at honesdale and then uh sunday we went double header right we ran heats at one o'clock and then we went to imps versus the world i wanted to touch on that imps versus the world was just a fantastic heat yes. it was supposed to be 10 on 10 Mm -hmm. That's how we had it set up. Right. Unfortunately, only six Imperials showed up. Five Worlds showed up. Still pretty even. It was pretty even. And I'll tell you, Zach Daniels brought a 85 body, but he had it on a 2010 frame. Mm -hmm. And he got down to third, and he was putting a whooping on yeah. some Imperials. He, yeah. And you know Zach from Vermont. He can drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that car was squatted up and still moving. <laughs> oh, it was great. He leafed it. It was in. 
those guys are really good builders. Very yes, good builders. They are. But he leafed it. He leafed that thing, and man, they were these imps were blasting him in the back, and he was taking it, taking it, taking it. It, it was very impressive. Uh, it came down to Jerry Harmon, who ended up winning it from right here in Lyle, New York. Um, second place was Kyle Hunter, and third place was Zach Daniels. Now, the first and second drivers, it was both of their first V8s and both of their first Imperials. No, not Jerry's first V8. Actually, Jerry's run V8s before. Yeah. Well, it was, I know it was both of their uh, first Imperials, Kyle's first V8, and uh, it was Jerry's first feature win. And Jerry uh, was running a Jeffy Fab Farm on meth. And it ran perfect. On, on methanol? Or, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was pretty impressive, I'll tell you. It was very impressive. It didn't skip a beat. Awesome. Um, and he, had a, he won a diver tranny last year at San Filippo. He won a diver tranny, and that's what was behind the, the wow. LS, and it really was singing. So Jerry won $1,850 out of the imp division, yeah. and uh, Zach was close. Zach was close. It was a great battle. So Jerry, Jerry had a 62, right? And Kyle had a 65? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it was a battle. I mean, it was fun to watch. I mean, the Imperials worked really good together when they were getting down to just, I think, maybe three Vicks were left. The Imperials were driving around each other. Yeah. And it was a question that a lot of people had. Would they stick together? And they truly did until maybe there was five cars left. Right. Right. But it got to the point where you had to hit somebody. Not everyone could hit Zach Daniels at the same time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It was like, you guys got to hit somebody else here. because And, and you know what? I got to say, Zach is a great sportsman because he truly took a whooping towards the end there and got out, shook everyone's hand, big smile. Everyone in that heat, big smile. And Chad Brown won Mad Dog. He did oh, a full track him. shot that hit another car. They hit another car, and the third car almost rolled over with Miles Rickett in it. It was yeah. crazy. <laughs> it was a good shot. It was, and then we had a truck division after that. And I got us—I can't say enough about Jeff Hirsch. He mm -hmm. has been killing it in the truck division. He won a couple weeks ago up in Lewis County, full tracking. It was the craziest run I've seen in a while. Well, the other night, right off the line, he hit Kevin Rouse and almost flipped him over, and he held him up in the air for probably a good 10 seconds, almost flipping them over. The crowd was losing their mind. Yeah, they loved it. Uh, I was losing my mind, too. It was, it was a great derby. I, you know you know me, Chris, when I'm, like, right there in it, I start getting excited. Right. Now, Josh, I'm just using you as a, a standpoint instead of having a trophy. Is if uh, My judgment of greatness is if I can get you running up down the side of the track trying to watch my hits, that's good enough for me. I, was, I had a big smile when you said that because it's true. Like, when these guys go full track and I'm, like, running with them because, it's like, I can't wait to watch this hit from three feet away. Oh, man, I get excited just thinking of it, you know? He just but, called uh, I've heard you called you know, Sir and Charles in the last half hour. This is crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Crazy. Are they going to call you Sir Hillbilly when you get to England? That's right. That's right. I'm Sir Hillbilly there. <laughs> That's right. If you meet the queen, don't touch her. It's a rule. It's a real thing. That Jeff Hurst truck, that was the one that he had a bash for cash, right? Oh, yeah, man. That was his fifth run. He's won, I think he said, three Mad Dogs with it and three or four wins with it. He's earned every one. I mean, the, the show he's putting on, I can't say thank you to him enough. All of our drivers, I got to say, Chris, like, I'm so proud of, when I watch our derbies, I'm so proud of our drivers because, you know, we've been all over the country, and, you know, we've been to some slow-paced stuff. Mm -hmm. And these guys, these guys, you almost have to, beg them to slow down it's like i gotta put more water out here because you guys gotta slow down <laughs> i don't want to say that out loud though you know <laughs> right. such a great uh, these guys are doing such a great job and they did man the crowd was on their feet all weekend um we're going back at it we're going to be at honesdale again on saturday mm -hmm. night and we're having another youth division so if you, wow. you have enough days right now if you're listening to me to build your kid a car and take it we had 30 last time a lot of those are going to come back i'm sure there'll be fresh ones and then Sunday we're going to Norwich, Shenango County Fair, doubleheader. We got virtually every division there. So, um, you know, we're not done yet. That's going to be our last one until San Felipe. Online, Spinning Wheels uh, Productions, LLC. If you want more details, you can find them there, active Facebook page. Uh, is Mark going to have a car at Holmesdale? I'm working on it now. I want to put him in Trent's car, 
right? Uh, I was actually going to work on it tonight, but it just started pouring. I mean, it is just downpouring. Anthony yeah, and I are cleaning in the garage. Even though Anthony and I didn't build no cars, uh, Anthony and I are cleaning the garage right now. Well, uh, <clears throat> they gave you the tools that you were built to handle, Josh. Yeah, well, the rest Here's... of my friends, you know, they got cars built, but they, they just disappear after Derby Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't get a chance to thank Anthony, but thank him for me for taking the time and getting that towed in and everything squared away for me. He's listening to you right now, Chuck. All He's right, no yeah, because I didn't get a chance no to thank him, and I, I appreciate him getting that done and you renting me the car down there because I had a good time. I got to say thanks to Anthony, too, because, you know, you got you to gotta always thank your pit crew. People That's don't right. realize that, like, pit crews are, like, what gets you out there every time. And Anthony probably worked an eight-hour day the other day just getting guys on the track. And I love him for it because it's just out of the kindness of his heart, <laughs> you know. And if you got a pit crew guy like that, make sure you thank him. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> That's why I'm thanking him now. He was a good man. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I'm not yelling at you, Chuck. I'm yelling at the world. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, real quick, because um, I'm sure you got other people to hit up. Um, I wanted to talk about Mark coming over real quick. Yeah. Mark, when Mark come out on the track, we do a best of paint, and we had this very cool – hippie or i'm sorry rick hansen painted a uh, trophy it mm -hmm. looked like a paint gun and mark did not have the best of paint car you know what i'm saying but i said mark why don't you get on the track so i can introduce you to the crowd and um dawson beers was out there with a hippie paint job that was just it ended up winning the six o'clock show um best of paint but anyways i introduced the crowd i can't the crowd welcomed mark they must have cheered for this guy the loudest all day long when they did a best of paint the roar that came from the crowd and i didn't say any of this it was all like natural you know what i'm saying right the crowd just roared for mark and he won best of paint and he didn't know it but we had queued up the english national anthem the england national anthem because you know when we have canada come down we always you know you try to respect yeah absolutely so we kicked we kicked right off to it, and, you know, Mark looks at me, and he just starts crying. <laughs> He's crying, <laughs> and I loved him. I loved the guy because he was just wrapped up in enjoying it, and um, I was I was proud to be part of that. I mean, Gully did a lot of work to get him there and stuff, and it was really cool that we could make somebody have such a good time, you know. And then he goes out there, he qualifies out of his 1 o'clock heat, gets his car back together, and comes back at 6 o'clock at night against great drivers. He ended up, you know, down at the end it was – Austin Williams, Anthony Williams, Holden Smith, and him, and Monica Birdsell. So it was a battle at the end, and Mark hung out with the best in the area. Right. You know, yeah. It was pretty cool. It was yeah. pretty cool. And I'm sure those Williams and, and Holden Smith, they all had screaming motors, didn't they? Oh, man. Holden Smith's motor is just like, wow. I mean, all of them, really. They're running <laughs> yeah. the lefts, you know. Oh, man. It, it just, there's some good stuff being built in our area, you know. There's some good stuff being built, man. There's some kids that want to build. Mark zacardi has got a nasty motor, too. Doesn't he? Does, didn't Mark, wasn't Mark in that circle there for a little while? Mark Zaccardi, he had a pretty nasty motor for a while, too, didn't he? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he does. He just wasn't out on the track this weekend. Hopefully we're going to we're gonna catch him later. But, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to fine-tune our economy class. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to put a teaser out there, but our goal is maybe to do a giant V8 show. Right. You know, we had... We have mini meltdown. What if we have some mega meltdown? What if we have, you know, what if we could give a, last year, at mini meltdown, we gave away $28,000 that day, $22,000. Wow. That's a lot you know, of money. <laughs> why, can't, why can't we give that away at the V8s? You wow. know? Um, so real quick, if I could touch on, we gave away over $8,000 just on Sunday at Morris. Um, I know that when we were in Lewis County, we gave $9,000 away. Um, at Honesdale, our final payout, payouts aren't out yet, but we're paying big bucks down at Honesdale. Come run for us. We are pushing the payouts, and it's it's because we want to push the payouts. But the more cars that come, the payouts go higher. Sure. Everyone's with us. So if we all work together, and you know me, Chris, I'm always pitching about working in crews, because and if we work together on absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah, we can have bigger car shows, and we can pay, we can pay big money. I want to write $10,000 checks. I don't know if Gully does, but I don't want to write $10,000 checks to drivers. You know, I've seen it in Utah. I've watched them, I've watched them give away a hundred grand in a night, man. And that's got to be a cool feeling. Gully does not want to write $10,000 checks. No, I know he does. <laughs> but, you know, but you know, can I say something quick too? Because me, Gully, and Buell, it's kind of a weird mixture, right? Because if anyone knows, Buell and I were like, 
I, I sometimes if you have anyone in your life that can make you mad in five seconds, it's fuel to me. Uh-huh. And yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> but weirdly, weirdly, the three of us are a fantastic group because we all have pros and cons. Mm-hmm. We're all open about telling each other when we have issues, and we all have, have you know things we're good at and things we're not, and we all cover different areas. Right. And I'm proud of our group. You know, I'm uh, I'm pushing us because I I think we're really doing good in our area, and I want to keep it going. I want to keep it going. I know these guys want to keep it going too. You know, so. Did you know that Mark went up on the hill at Morris and called his mom from the fairgrounds? No. <laughs> he told what? Really? What, did, what? Chuck was with him. What he, was, he was just so he was he was filled with gratitude. He told uh, his his mom as he would say how much he gratitude that you guys have showed him. The hospitality was great and. What did he say specifically? They treated me like he, a... he, he thought he felt like a pop star. <laughs> you guys have made him feel like you know. And I was there with him at the demos, helping him fix his car back up and everything. And you know, I got to say for our uh, demolition community, everybody was coming up, welcoming him in here, telling him to have a good time. You know, I mean, we really just total strangers coming up to him. He was just overwhelmed. He felt like a pop star. That's that's what we want. You know, you know where I learned that from. Chris Marquardt. <laughs> Chris Marquardt. You got to make people feel like they're famous. You know, we turn people famous. You know, and that's that's the goal, right? And me and me and Mark had a, a discussion about Chris Marquardt. I told him that he doesn't demolition derby. <laughs> what are you, what are you talking but about? But he's me? one of the biggest supporters <laughs> and the largest reason our sport's been growing in this area is Chris Marquardt. So he, he you know, uh, he may not be in the car, but Chris is in our sport. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Mark was a Mark was a really good. Mark was a good time. I, I kept putting him on the mic, and the guy has money on the mic. I mean, <laughs> he was getting the crowd all all pumped up, and they were cheering for him. And I mean, I was just loving it. It was just something different, you know. And it was cool to see us not, you know, Americans get bad names. I think that like we're not welcoming, but not Morris, New York. They were they were awesome about it. They were awesome about it. Did they play the national anthem before banger races in England? I believe I'm not sure. Was. I don't know. I, 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 I would imagine, I, yeah, I don't know. No idea. I know he was, sure. there was so, one song he wanted to play. I couldn't remember the name of Moldy Old Doe. He wanted to play. We played it. We played it. So they got this song that they play when the cars come out for, like, the finals or whatever out there. It's called Moldy Old Doe. Really? And yeah. the, the sound guy, Mike Wilcox, at the fair, he found it overnight. Like, because we all left the fair late that night and he ended up messaging me in the morning he's like I found this song and we played it for Mark when he pulled in the feature yeah it was cool <laughs> yeah it was cool <laughs> that is cool oh, it was he's a big Elvis fan you said right oh yeah huge Elvis fan yeah and that, that uh, cracked me up yeah. he wore a he wore an Elvis suit and took pictures with his car and took some pictures with Martin in an Elvis suit and I was in tears laughing he goes Decker get in this and I'm like absolutely not sir <laughs> <laughs> And he explained that he explained explained what was behind that is uh is one of the old legends of their banger races that passed away and he was a big Elvis fan so there's yeah. twelve or thirteen of them that all dressed in Elvis and went out in a car so he had a great meaning behind it too he's an Elvis fan very cool yeah so uh, that was cool last thing is we got San Filippo coming up mm-hmm. you know uh, that's going to be on October fifth so don't forget it come help us support a charity and we are doing ultimate derby fantasy in utah we are sending somebody to utah for ten dollars you got to go to our website you just fill out a ticket we're going to pull it next month and we're going to send somebody for a vacation we're going to fly you out rental car hotel you get a derby car danny ogden's building it and it's going to be painted by Derek shelley's painter nice and it's just airbrush it's going to be sick <laughs> do you think and, danny uh, ogden josh do you think danny ogden is just just Popped into my mind as, as you mentioned that Danny was building that car. Do you think that Chuck and Danny could be related somehow? Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> you Dan- know what? That's funny. They are the same type of guy, definitely. Like just every time flat button. Exactly. Every same time. <laughs> same person. I'm looking, looking for a different yeah. state builder. I'm looking to rent a car anywhere else. <laughs> that's funny. That's Danny's, funny. But, Danny's a good dude. Yeah, that's go a sweet our- deal. Yeah, Danny's building a cool car. He's got a 355 in it. It's a 98 Vic, but it's going to be serious. You're going to get to run on Utah track, and the money that you put in is for charity, not $1. Danny's not taking money for his car. Johnny's paying for hotels and flights. He's not taking a penny, and our group's not. It goes right to the children saving for San Filippo syndrome. So 
deals. Right. You know, if you go on our website, just click the link, put your name. It's ten bucks. Buy as many tickets as you can. You know, I mean, and you might win it. What if we fly you out? Oh, and you get to go. We're going to be live streaming it out there, so you get to go on with live stream with me. Not that anyone cares about that, but <laughs> <laughs> it is a perk. I say <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun for somebody to sit next to you and listen to you talk. Chris, real quick, <laughs> stop. <for that. laughs> Chris, I got another thing because I had to tell you this. Yeah. Um, so I asked. The, I asked. The, we were asking trivia questions. I like to give stuff away asking trivia questions, and I said, you know, somebody said, "What, Josh? Say what? What was? Uh, what made you popular? You know?" So I did. I said, "What made me popular? How did I get so well known?" And all these kids start running out to the fence, dude. All I start hearing is the wall. Um, you're oh. a sandbagger. Oh, you can't drive. Oh. Seven year old yelling, <laughs> and I'm like, "What the heck?" <laughs> And here's the funny thing, Chris. Nobody guessed it. Nobody guessed it. I heard everything. But I know I'm like, Crash Course 3 podcast. And everyone's like, oh, yeah. And it's like, oh, jeez. <laughs> These kids remember the wall. <laughs> I, well, it's, I guess it's arguable. Like, like I don't know if the wall was I don't know if the wall was it because I think the wall the wall was prior. But they could have they could have said uh, Yates County. They could have said the Wilkins. They could have said <laughs> Fighting in Penyan. Or Crash Course. I mean, the, the... I'm going to say Crash Course. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm going to go, the day you asked me to be on Crash Course, that was the day my life changed. Okay. No doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, i got to eat some dinner. My dinner's about done. Um, I appreciate you being on. I really appreciate you getting Mark on. That was yeah. cool. That was really cool. Good. Yeah, it's, uh, he's a, he was a good guest. It was good to talk with him. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You're also on the cover of a magazine. I am? Yeah. Oh. First one, you remember that? Oh, the, the your first mate, yeah, Derby Inc. I got that on my wall. Yeah, <laughs> I got that on the wall. You know what? That's awesome because it's me and Bobby Brockway. Yeah, you remember that? I do. I I do. I, I've got. I was just in Utah with Bobby talking about that actually a few months ago. Really? What yep. do you have? What do you have to say about that? <laughs> he was saying, "Well, no, I don't even want to say." Okay. <laughs> he <was just> <laughs> about it. <laughs> I got. <laughs> I got to talk to you in the next couple of days because we're leaving for Iowa on on Friday. So I got to talk to you in the next couple of days. So maybe I'll, I'll try to catch up with you after school tomorrow or something. Okay. What time does school get done for you? 12.30. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Done. I'll call you tomorrow. Sounds good, buddy. All right, man. I'll, 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 oh. I'll let everybody know that, you're off, that I'm off of your blocked list and people can stop doing O-Face. <laughs> Chris, that was so funny. <laughs> so funny. When you put it up, I let it sit for a while <laughs> before I answered because I knew people would be like, what the heck's going on here? So funny. <laughs> but, hey, Chuck, I want to say good run. Thanks for junking that car for me, you know, uh, that you did a great job out there, and thanks for helping Mark out. And I yeah. really want to say I really want to say thank you to Gully for making all that stuff happen with Mark because, uh, real quick, Mark was saying how excited he was to take the trophy back to England, and I was kind of thinking about it. That's kind of neat. Our stuff is going over – you know, over to other countries. I don't yes. know. That's kind of special. That's like yeah. even bigger than I would have thought. Right. Uh, our promoting was so it, it was a special weekend with Mark there. He's going to have to explain an interesting helpful. carry on, but nonetheless, is going to England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Hey, I'll catch up with everybody later, and uh, maybe we'll get on before San Filippo. Sounds good to me. We'll make a plan of it. Sounds good, guys. Talk See to you later. later. later Bye. Decker. Josh Decker with Spinning Wheels, wrapping up a busy week. Got a little bit more Demolition Derby action to get to this weekend. Wrapping up Honesdale on Saturday. Wrapping up after that. Um, after that, they go on to Norwich. We got a couple items to hit on quickly. The Blizzard Bash is coming up around the corner. We talked about San Filippo shortly after that. It's going to be Blizzard Bash, if you can believe it. We're already looking at November. BlizzardBash.com has the details. Blizzard Bash 2019 is going to be at the Kansas Expo Center in Topeka, Kansas. November the 6th is the heat draws. That's that annual pit party that they have. All the fans can get down there, meet and greet the drivers. They do all the heat draws as well, scheduled from 7 o'clock till 10 o'clock in Vendor's Row. November the 7th is the national and qualifying first round for the teams. The following day is going to be the qualifying bracket, uh, qualifying rounds for the qualifying team and national team as well. That's November 7th and 8th. November the 9th, business picks up. Compacts and limited weld team heats are the first order of the day. Then all the Team B features the trucks. Limited weld one and done on the card as well. And then all the Team A mains come across the track on the 10th of November, Championship Sunday. We have more information about Smash Demolition Derby who oversees Blizzard Bash. August the 8th, a couple days, they're going to be in action again at the Athens County Fair in Athens, Ohio. 7 o'clock start time. Pro Stock, Stock Compacts 
order it there. August the 9th is the Champaign County Fair in Urbana, Ohio. 8 o'clock start. Smash it class. Any year pro stock, street stocks, mini cars, full size trucks, mini trucks, smash it mowers, and power wheels. The next day, they're going to be busy again. Ross County Fair in Chillicothe, Ohio. That is the home of Bash for Cash. 7 o'clock start there. Any year pro stocks, mini cars, street stocks, power wheels, full size trucks, smash it mowers, and power wheels there. August the 12th is the Meeks County Fair in Pomeroy, Ohio. 7 o'clock start. Leaf class, mini cars, street stocks, smash it mowers. And power wheels. Every time we talk about the demolition derby in Pomeroy, Ohio, all I could think of is Stuart Pomeroy, one of the most storied photographers who followed around, um, phenomenally well versed in the Mopar missile, the the drag car, oh, the guy yeah. that hosts um, Final Round podcast with me, the drag racing show on Thursdays here on Figure Lakes One. His uncle uh, was one of the engineers that built the Mopar missile. So he had a pretty good relationship with, with Pomeroy and it goes way back with all the, that's all like Barracudas and Challengers and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, not quite yeah, Newports that's... and New Yorkers and Imperials, <laughs> but nonetheless, there's a, there is a, a bit of crossover interest in the, the demolition derby yeah. side of things. A um, couple other items to note that we said that we were going to get to. We can't believe that we went through. That was a fast hour. Zach Anderson came away with the winning hardware uh, over there in Dixon. Uh, Corey Klug took the win. It was the second win in a row for Corey Klug at Dixon. Um, some interesting circumstances, nonetheless, with uh, the, the finishing sequence. Zach Anderson uh, was given the winning trophy from Corey Klug, which I thought that was a good show of sportsmanship. Mm. Uh, Kenny Rosno came away with yet another win in Pierce County uh, in his home area over there in Nebraska. So um, hard to believe that Kenny Rosno is picking up win after win in, in, in that neck of the woods, but nonetheless... Um, as hard as he drives, the cars are the car's nose still looks like it's perfect. The back end rolled up. I mean, it, it just he drives so hard, and he's and he's getting good results out of it. And then Steve Siopa winning yet another Keystone Nationals. It was this weekend. Um, I did send him a message. I haven't heard back. Uh, at risk of him doing something business related, I don't want to interrupt him. But we'll we'll follow up with him here in the coming days, and we will be able to get to him when we get back from the break again. For everybody who had, had anybody who had missed these notes earlier, next week we will be off. We won't be on the air next week at all. We're going to be in Iowa with Brandon Tyson. Brandon Tyson, a lot of you remember him from some of the fame at uh, Winter Slam when he drove his uh, Burgundy and Silver Chrysler. He was also the promoter of the Plymouth County Fair in Iowa, and he's come to New York a couple times to help with some of the announcing stuff. And, and of course, he's come to a handful of the New Year's Eve parties as well. So we're going to be seeing them. Out there, we're going to be on Lake Okoboji. My phone will be left in the camper. Don't try to reach me. I'm not doing artwork. <laughs> we are we are on break. Looking forward to that. Um, summer school ends for me Friday. The kids still have to go next week. <laughs> yep, my boy too. <laughs> um, thanks a lot for coming in. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks for having up. me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I, I know you got some other irons in the fire. I, I, I hope that you can keep us posted on stuff as that develops because you've got some other opportunities coming up before we even get out to talking about you jumping on a plane and flying over to yeah. England. Now if I get Matt Parman to, he said if I build a car for Bash for Cash next year he'll tell me out there. And You doing street stock? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm not going yeah, you know me, I'm not a builder. I'm a sender, but I'm always looking for builders. <laughs> one out there, I'm willing to rent. <laughs> awesome. Well, I do appreciate you coming on uh, again, and, and it's absolutely going to be a, a thrill when you get the chance to go over there in England. Big thanks to Spinning Wheels Productions, Jeremy Gully, Jody Gully for hosting uh, Mark Hossie the way that they did. Big thanks to Mark for coming on the show, Josh for making time, and of course, Charles Bowman. Very formal these days. It's formal. Very formal. Is that is that is that hometown now too no, as well? No, that's is, just is when I got a collar on. It's just <laughs> 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 for uh, the hillbilly, the hammer truck Bowman coming to hanging out with us. That is going to do it for us here at the North Park Building at Academy Square. We will see everybody again in two weeks when we're back after break. We'll see you then. Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who hosts Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at smashitderby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at stirringdirtracing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel, and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FigureLinks1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. <laughs>